Hey everyone, this is Third 43216 here, bringing you my first video of 2014. Now, I've been busy for the beginning of the year, so I haven't had time to do a video, but in the meantime, I've been thinking of what I wanted to do with the future with videos going forward, and I've decided that I'm going to uh, cover the full discography of a band. Now, I've been roaming around through a few different ideas of which bands I'm going to do, but I've decided I'm going to do the discography of In Flames. If you don't know who In Flames are, they are one of the pioneering melodic death metal bands coming out of Sweden, so let's talk about a band that's been making great albums, a lot of different types of albums, over the course of the last 20 years or so. In fact, this album is approaching its 20th year anniversary. That is the first album, Lunar Strain. Now this album is a little bit different, and it's very unique in the ever-changing in Flames discography, but this one is sort of different than a lot of the other stuff they did in the 90s. And not just, it has a lot of interesting things that don't happen on the, the next few albums that come out after this one. This one had a lot of, like, folk metal elements, which I thought was kind of interesting. So, without further ado, let's get into some of the tracks I thought were really cool. Now, the opener is Behind Space, which is probably one of their more popular songs from the 90s and of course that it's evidenced by the fact that they re-recorded it on Colony later on but this is a really great album opener it's also one of the best tracks on the album it has got a really awesome opening riff and a lot of cool like chugging riffs later on and a really really cool melodic solo to introduce people for the first time to melodic death metal back in the early 90s and it is a great example of an excellent melodic death metal track with some really excellent vocals from Mikael Stain, who is uh, the vocalist for Dark, Dark Tranquility. But before that, he did the first album with In Flames, which is the only album he was featured on vocals. I really, really like that song, Behind Space. The next song I want to talk about is the, the title track, Lunar Strain, which has a really cool like main riff and then some cool lead parts in the middle. And it's got some really cool and interesting lyrics, and I really like this song. It's definitely one of the best songs on this album again. The third track is Star Forsaken, which starts with this, like, violin intro, which is one of the folk metal elements that I've, I've mentioned that occur throughout this album. And then it goes into some cool riffing, and then there's a cool solo in the middle. The next song is Dreamscape, which is uh, instrumental. It's kind of repetitive. It's a, It's... It's got some okay riffs, but again, it's repetitive for the amount of time it is. It's like a two, three minute long song, and they just repeat the same riffs over and over, kind of. But it's still pretty good. Next song, Ever Lost Part 1. It's a mediocre track, I think. It's it's the slowest track on the album, with some kind of slower riffs. And then later on, there's some cool soloing parts that I thought were good, but overall, the song is only okay. But then, then we come to Everlast Part 2, which is very, very unique track on the album. It's all acoustic, and instead of Mikael on vocals doing his really high-pitched screams, there's a female vocalist doing clean singing. It's interesting. It's like a more traditional folk song, in a way. The next song I want to talk about is... I don't know how to pronounce it. Hargalatin? I'm sure I'm butchering that name completely. It's uh, another instrumental, except the majority of the song is all violin, except at the end there's some guitar, melodic guitar playing that comes in along with the guitar, I mean with the violins. It's a very interesting song, and it's a pretty unique song for In Flames, again with the folk metal elements that you don't really see later on in their discography. Now the next song I really want to talk about is the self-titled song called In Flames. There's some very interesting lyrics about fire and ice and stuff like that, from what I could tell. And plus, there's some really awesome, like, soloing towards the end of the song, which I really thought was really interesting. And then, they close off with two shorter songs, Upon an Oaken Throne, which is the fastest song on the album, which has some really cool melodic shredding on the lead playing. Although, the, the fast riff the fast rhythm riff is it's fast but it's kind of boring in my opinion but i really do like the soloing on this album i mean on this song then the album closer clad in shadows 
has some really awesome riffs. It's one of the best songs on the album. It's probably the second best right after Behind Space. And it has this really cool melodic solo, which is one of the better solos on this album. And it's, as I said before, it's one of my favorite tracks on this album. And it's, if you're going to get a few songs off it, the ones I would recommend are Behind Space, Lunar Strain, In Flames, and Clad in Shadows. Those are just my personal favorites. Now let's get into the sound of the band. Let's see, I'm probably going to butcher some of these names again because they're Swedish names and I don't speak Swedish, so... I'm I'm going to not try and pronounce the last names, but some of the first names are at least reasonable and to attempt pronouncing. So, I'm sorry if I offend anyone by pronouncing the names, but it's easier for me to put a name to someone as I discuss what they're doing. So, first let's talk about... Uh, Hesper, Jesper, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's one of the two, because sometimes the J's are H sounds and sometimes are Y sounds, so I'm just guessing on this one. You know, he's the main man of... He was the main man of In Flames up until 2008. The guy who founded the band and responsible for some of the very incredible riffs found throughout their discography. Now, him and Glenn on guitars... The guitar production is kind of crappy on this album, but... What do you expect from a debut album, which was sort of just a side project at the time? Little did they know it was going to become one of the greatest melodic death metal bands of all time. But there are some really cool and interesting rhythm riffs and some really cool lead playing throughout this album. There's not as much as on future albums, which focus very heavily on the on the melodic lead guitar playing, but there's still some interesting lead parts on this. And there are definitely some great riffs, like I mentioned, the ones in Behind Space and In Flames and in Cloud and Shadows, which are really good riffs. And they are the standout pieces of this album, in my opinion. Now, Johan on bass. The bass was kind of simplistic on this album. I had trouble hearing it in some places too, but for the most part it seemed like it was just following along with the guitars doing. There's nothing really interesting happening on the bass. Okay, Hesper, Jesper, I'm sorry about the name again. Is also he also did the drums on this album because this is before they actually had a drummer, so he just did the session drums for this album. Again, the drums are sort of just pretty simplistic on this. There's nothing too fancy. It's just sort of keeping the time and stuff like that. There's no many interesting fills and stuff like that, which do appear on future albums once they actually have a dedicated drummer who's not a guitar player playing drums. But it still it works for this album. The sort of simplistic stripped down in flames before they get into all this crazy melodic stuff that they do again on their future albums. But, again, it all comes together in a very good package on the music side. Now let's talk about Mikael on vocals. He's got some pretty impressive high range vocals on this album. They're very high screams that sound like a banshee wailing or something like that. It's pretty interesting. There are some weird parts where the vocals get kind of weird. It's sort of high-pitched wailing type of thing. It's not really like... A traditional metal whale you think of or it's not really a scream is sort of it sounds kind of weird there's a part that happens on the on this track lunar strain as well as on one of the other tracks i don't remember which one it was but overall i think the vocals are very good on this album and then his lyrical content which he wrote all the lyrics for this album there's some really interesting stuff on this about planets and stars and fire and stuff like that it's like cool interesting stuff it's not really personal like a lot of future in flame stuff is more like personal emotional kind of stuff whereas their earlier stuff especially on this album is these cool abstract concepts like astrology and stuff like that which i thought was really cool lyrical content for this album which overall makes a very interesting combination with the with the instruments that i just talked about but overall, it's a really good album. It's definitely a great start to a great discography from a fantastic band. Overall, I would give this album a 7 out of 10. And it's definitely worth checking out if you're going to start getting into In Flames. It's one of the better ones they've released. But I'm a huge In Flames fan. I love all their albums from start to finish. So that's why I think this is a great way to do my first discography. is to a band that has changed so much over time. And they never put out the same album twice. And each one is phenomenal in its own way. And this one is one of the best ones I've heard in a while. This is I hadn't really listened to it much before going to this. 
but I just sat down and listened to it a bunch of times and was like, wow, why didn't I not check out this album sooner? This is one of their better albums. But like I said, it's a 7 out of 10. It's definitely worth checking out. That's it for the review, and stay tuned for more In Flames reviews coming up soon, as well as I'm going to be doing a few other album reviews coming up. I'm going to try get putting out more reviews, as like I've said before, I didn't put out a lot for the first month and a half of the year, and I want to try and put out more reviews for you guys this year. I'm going to try and get one up a week at least. Maybe two with... I'll do an In Flames video, and then uh, just whatever album I feel like reviewing. But until the next review, whatever it will be, I will see you guys next time. And be sure to like and like the video if you liked it, and subscribe for more reviews and other metal videos. Anyway, see you guys next time.